I feel like in every one of those elos you can literally just play anything you want. Everything is viable until you get to a point where players actually beat you in counterpicking. That's when low elo is gone. This game is defined by counterpicking, and when there's elos where you literally can pick anything you want because you can't be counterpicked, that's pretty low elo. Why would you walk up? I mean, I just kill her if I flash her here. <clears throat> Bad player. This is literally what you have to do to win. You have to 1v9,000. There's no other option. You have to consistently kill your laners and take leads that most people don't bother taking. You can't play 50-50 in low elo, or any elo for that matter. If you're not playing an aggressive champ or a champion who can't roam, you're useless. You don't do anything. You can't play scaling champs unless you're playing Nasus, who can actually 1v9,000 for doing nothing. Nasus pretty much just beats everybody in the game by pressing Q. that flash this is such piss low this is diamond four fucking elo dear god i wonder why he's trying to contest me like why are you walking up This is just a low elo account, it's just diamond four. It's very shitty elo. You gotta get boots. So I feel like Swifties is actually the best boots on GP, at least for GP mid. High base move speed is too important on a champion who has no mobility. I say sacrifice the 20% and just go for a Ceridia's Grudge. With Duskblade, it's super good. It's just, you have to be more proactive. The less you're doing, the less you're going to win. Just trying a new build out, Ceridius is pretty strong. It's like the old school 50-50 GP build, it's a bunch of crit and a bunch of flat pen. With percent pen, that's just the build I'm doing right now. It's better than the full crit build only because there's no... It's not hardcore RNG like the crit build is. 
flat pen right now is just too good because the games are over so quickly and you have to take leads that you normally just wouldn't be taking in other seasons. I really want to go get Swifties. I can start roaming. I mean, all you have to do is... When I gave a fuck about climbing, I took a billion notes. I just... I opened up a notepad and literally just... Eyeballed everything I had written down. I don't do that anymore because I don't care to. But... If I was serious about climbing again, I'd open up my notepad, redo it, and... Uh, just basically have a game plan every every match. It will definitely help you climb. Stick to a few champs. And just do your thing. So like as an example, if you want uh, an idea of what I would write. Um, Oh my god, what am I doing, bro? If you want an example of... Man, we should still get both of them. If you want an example of what I would do, so... For Twisted Fate, one of the biggest things was... Understanding D-Mats and Priority, and also rotating for Crab. So obviously, knowing crab spawn 315, dematting the fourth wave and immediately trying to shove out four waves, and then rotating to the side of the jungle is like the most important early game thing on TF. That's something I had written down and just abided by pretty much every game. It's something I've known for a while, but it's about basically just doing it every match you get into. Get prio. Third wave, get prio. Fourth wave, get prio, and then immediately rotate. Do everything you can to push out third and fourth wave. And then go contest crab immediately. So that was like one minor thing, but it did help. And the only way to get better is to actually actively have these things happen in each game. Also, understanding how much damage your abilities do. That's another thing you have to realize, is just what abilities do what at certain times of the game. So, like, as an example, Twisted Fate. Level 5, your Q will half HP backline creeps. So, your wave clear plan is two Qs on a wave and a red card on front, and then just take the rest out. You'll basically one-shot the casters, and you're able to do whatever you want. Because it's all about prio in the mid lane. Priority is the most important thing for climbing. You can't just sit here doing nothing and expect to win, because if your team is doing the same, no one's going to be climbing. No one's going to be carrying. Didn't really take any notes for GP. It was more of like certain warding patterns. I think that's really just what it comes down to. When you're playing an aggressive champ like Gangplank who wants to win lane, you need to understand how to ward properly and where to ward. You have to track the jungle really fucking hard. So, a lot of what it would be is, uh... Watching lanes. Seeing where jungles start. Um, and just warding accordingly, and then, uh, playing around that. Just playing hyper-aggressive into no ganks. That's how we did it. I'm gonna ult bot because that's a huge fucking wave. It is a nasty wave that's 100% worth the ult. And I got cannon. You go fire at will, raise morale, death's daughter. Death's daughter is useless. It's been dead since, uh, like, what, season 5 or something? 
It's a dead fucking rune. Or not rune, it's a dead, uh... A dead upgrade. Doesn't do anything for you. Where are alerts? Did you donate? Yo, someone... Kekwan donated $30 one day and alerts were off. What a homie. If minions die around you, you'll get EXP. By the way, the most important thing in the game are minions, just saying. Remember that. Minions and roaming and plates are the most important thing for winning. Not champion kills. Champion kills are just like the cherry on top. They're not something you ever get, but when you do, it's like, uh... Pretty fucking good. They didn't do anything to Death's Daughter, it just got terrible because Thunderlord's Decree was taken away from the game. Thunderlord's Decree is what made Death's Daughter good. Gotta love Silas face tanking five people and living. Champ is so fucking unbalanced. Ever thinking of grabbing futures market? Nope, trash. It's useless. Useless, useless, really useless. There's no need to. You're a champion who makes money. If you're even, you're winning. If you're winning, you're double winning. If you're losing, you're still potentially even. When you take Futures Market, you spend too much gold on items that basically make your passive kind of not useful. The only thing I can think about is maybe getting an early Sheen and then trying to dominate lane that way. I don't think it's overall good, though, for mid lane. Biscuits seem a little too overpowered to pass up. Futures Market is not free gold, though, because you spend gold to get gold. Or you spend gold, you get items, but you lose gold. You lose more gold than you would. It's just understanding power spikes of what Futures Market's good for. The only thing I can think about is the early game Sheen. That's it. That's the only thing it would ever be good for. Biscuits are getting nerfed, but the nerf doesn't matter. It's not a nerf that actually affects them. They're changing the gold uh, when you sell it to like 5 instead of 30, so it really doesn't matter. Nothing is changing. They're not making the rune worse by any means. It's the exact same fucking rune, literally. You just get less gold for selling it. Wow, this team was good. What a coin flip.